In 1997, Ian Stewart published his book called Nature's Numbers. And in that book, we got a glimpse of how mathematician views our natural world. There are many chapters in the book of Ian Stewart, but today, we will focus mainly on chapter 4, entitled, The Constants of Change. But, do you know the context of this book? If not, then it is your chance to listen. Long ago, humans thought that nature swung between two opposing points of view. One view believes that the universe obeys fixed immutable laws, and everything is well-defined objective reality, while the other believes that there is no such thing as object reality, and that everything is flux, and all is change. As we discover the truth, and the knowledge about the people who greatly contributed to this ideology, lend out your ears and open your imagination for us to travel back in time. The rise of science is largely being governed by the first viewpoints but as we advance together as a society, there have been increasing signs that prevailing cultural background is starting to switch to the second way of thinking. In this vlog, we will discuss about the constants of this reality and on how they generate change and also the findings of the past. I am John Prince Algatilogo and joining me today are Claire Ordonel and Jewel Etabag. Now, we're going to dive deep into the constants of change. Now we begin as we take a step back into the Renaissance with the discoveries of Sir Isaac Newton. Isaac Newton. When we hear his name, what is the first thing that comes into mind? Is it gravity? The apple falling from a tree? Well, both guesses are correct. However, did you know who Isaac Newton is? Isaac Newton was an English mathematician, physicist, astronomer, theologian, and an author who was famous for his laws of motion and laws of gravitation. He and his friend Gottfried Wilhelm Leibniz invented calculus and its two techniques, the integration and differentiation. Both techniques work side by side or in one and dot the other. Between them, they tell you that if you know any of the functions, the position, velocity, or acceleration at every instant, then you can work out the other two. Using the laws of physics, the change of nature can be described by mathematical processes. Example, the heat equation, which is described as the rate of change in body's temperature. But what is rate of change? A rate of change is about the difference between some quantity now and its value an instant into the future. Equations of this kind are called differential equations. To learn more about Newton's discoveries, Let's take a trip to the outer space. Aren't we all amazed on how the Earth magically flows in space? Gravity, in fact, is what holds our world together, and it's not a magical force. Over three centuries ago, gravity was discovered, the solution of striving the universe in terms of differential equations, and then solving it was the basis for Newton's discovery of the law of gravitation. He assumed that all bodies in the universe is attracted by the same force. The mathematical formula for motion was solved back then. Some examples include Ohm's law, law of friction, and Joule's law. Newton and his successors were unable to find exact solutions for a system of three or more bodies. Rather, they attempted to devise methods for calculating approximate numbers. Around 1860, for example, the French astronomer Charles Eugène Delaunay filled an entire book with a single approximation to the motion of the moon. A simple example of an approximation algorithm is the minimum vertex cover problem. Gilles Shaw demonstrated in 1994 that a system of three bodies is not integrable. He demonstrated that such a system can exhibit a strange phenomenon known as Arnold diffusion, which was first discovered by Vladimir Arnold. Arnold diffusion produces an extremely slow random drift in the relative orbital positions. This drift is not truly random. It is an example of what is now known as chaos, which is defined as seemingly random behavior with purely deterministic causes. Lawrence a Chaiper and Double Pendulum are both chaotic behavior examples. 
it's worth noting that this approach alters the definition of soul. That word originally meant find a formula, then it shifted to find approximate numbers. Lastly, it has changed into tell me what the solutions look like. We are looking for qualitative responses instead of quantitative ones. In some ways, what is going on appears to be a retreat, but it is incorrect to interpret this development as a retreat because this change in meaning has taught us that there are no formulas for questions like the three-body problem. Mathematics might deal with scientific derivation of formula. Its qualitative approach in the methods explicitly advances the field. Therefore, the concept of change stands from the philosophical aspect of the scholars to pursue whatever they aspire to acquire in the body of knowledge. To sum up, the concept of change proves that numbers are not static, but rather dynamic. It is always open for change.